So in a decentralized autonomous organization, you generally have uh, many different uh, kind of individual stakeholders uh, with their own economic incentives, um, and they're all aligned through this kind of protocol. And... Cześć. Jestem właśnie pod biurem Consensus. Dzisiaj będzie parę słów i prezentacji o zdecentralizowanych, autonomicznych organizacjach, czyli o tak zwanych DAO. Zapraszam. okazję być na meetupie, gdzie człowiek z konsensusu opowiadał o zdecentralizowanych, autonomicznych organizacjach, czyli DAO. Jeżeli nie wiecie, co to jest konsensus, konsensus jest to największe studio deweloperskie, jeżeli chodzi o blockchain i Ethereum. Otwierają właśnie swój oddział w, również w Londynie, no i na takim meetupie, gdzie właśnie ludzie z konsensusu, ale nie tylko, mówili o różnych projektach, w tym właśnie o DX DAO. Miałem szansę uczestniczyć. Całkiem edukacyjne, nie tylko jeżeli chodzi o ten projekt, ale w ogóle czym jest DAO, czyli Decentralized Autonomous Organizations. Zapraszam na krótką relację. Who might not know uh, what they are. So, this is the official term. It is very convoluted, but um, we'll break it down. So, a DAO is essentially uh, a decentralized autonomous organization. That's what uh, DA DAO stands for. Uh, and essentially, it's, um, it's an organization uh, where the rules are encoded in uh, computer programs known as smart contracts. And uh, this is all transparent and uh, it's controlled by its shareholders, right? So. Um, it's not influenced by any kind of central party or, 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 or um, a central governing body. Um, and the unique aspect of a DAO is that all the financial transa transactions and uh, rules of, of, of the system are all on the blockchain open source for everyone to see. So that probably sounds convoluted, so we'll, we'll kind of uh, uh, break it down and make it easier to understand with maybe an example uh, that you guys already know. So I'm sure everyone knows roughly how companies work. Um, and they typically have you know, a traditional top-down uh, uh, structure where you have you know, a CEO, uh, board, uh, management, uh, employees, etc., etc. And for the most part, it's one legal entity um, in one or more jurisdictions uh, with employment, employment contracts. You know, there's many layers of management, coordination, uh, so that you can kind of enforce processes. Um, and, and you know, there's positives of organizing like that. It's very, it's very efficient in some ways, but it comes with many other drawbacks. In that, um, you know, there's uh, uh, you know decision bottlenecks, you know, misinformation. Uh, there's single points of failure, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, um, a decentralized autonomous organization tries to kind of look at this idea of an organization or just people collaborating and try to think about how you can approach it in a different way. Um, it's not, it's not necessarily a better way, but it's just a different way. That's it. Um, so in a decentralized autonomous organization, you generally have uh, many different uh, kind of individual stakeholders uh, with their own economic incentives, um, and they're all aligned through this kind of protocol. And an example is um, obviously you have a developer, user, exchange, miner. If anyone recognizes that, that kind of looks a little bit like Bitcoin. I'll talk more about that uh, later on. But um, just some kind of um, uh, things to kind of talk about when it comes to decentralized uh, autonomous organizations is that uh, there's no central legal entity. Um, they transcend uh, a physical location. They're kind of digital organizations. Um, no employment contracts. Simply people who are very curious and have their own kind of uh, 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 you know economic incentives, and they're all aligned uh, through this one entity. Um, you know they often use smart contracts instead of you know legal employment contracts. So uh, some examples of DAOs. Uh, Obviously, the original, uh, what some people like to think is the original DAO, which is uh, Bitcoin. So, if you think about what Bitcoin is, um, it's basically a protocol, a uh, specification that people kind of, uh, you know, uh, have kind of plugged themselves into. So, you have many different people. So, you have um, independent for profit miners who um, secure the network by giving computation and kind of adding uh, uh, blocks to the chain. 
Um, then you have you know, exchanges, developers, um, all of these people who have their own kind of independent reasons for being involved, um, not necessarily kind of uh, uh, owned or, or operated under one entity, but they kind of, they, they, they mesh together through you know, economic incentives. So this is one example of um, kind of a loosely, uh, a loose DAO. Um, and then the gentleman in the back who uh, uh, was involved in something called the DAO, this is it. Uh, so this is a fantastic project, kind of like what Molak DAO is trying to do today. So um, it's essentially um, it's it's a it's a it's a DAO that was set up by um, a few people, and um, you know investors uh, invested 150 million dollars back in 2016, which is a significant amount of uh, what the Ethereum network was back then. So it was an incredible you know um, uh, experiment for its time. You know, so there was about 11,000 investors. We're lucky to have one in the room right now which is uh, fantastic. Um, and essentially the idea behind this DAO was very similar to Moloch DAO is that um, they, they wanted to take money and pull it together and invest it into different projects uh, to kind of see the future of Ethereum uh, be realized. So at the time, you know, this was huge. Uh, not only was uh, the DAO such, such a, like they raised so much money and, and, and when Ethereum, I think 2016 Ethereum, I'm not sure what the exact numbers were, but it was obviously a lot more smaller than it is right now, and so um, the 150 million dollars that was locked up in these contracts took up a very significant portion of uh, the entire market cap of Ethereum. And uh, yeah, it just you know it was a fantastic experiment. It was one where you know for the first time ever, people around the world could collaborate in a trustless uh, way, um, and you know it was all it was all um, amazing. You know the you know the idea of uh, people to kind of Collectively, collectively come together and invest in things and push the uh, ecosystem forward. Um, it had you know investors all over the world, about eleven thousand in total, which is phenomenal. Um, but then, as we as we know, uh, it got hacked. Um, it was very early in the ecosystem, two thousand and sixteen. Um, at that point, uh, smart contracts were very, very, and still are to some extent to this day, very hard to uh, put together. And um, you know, for 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 many different reasons, you know, it failed. Um, to be specific, um, fifty million dollars was uh, stolen, which is a lot of money. Um, they collected about eleven point five million ETH uh, way back then, and uh, three point six of that was uh, taken due to this uh, this vulnerability within the, within the contracts, and of course. Um, that 3.6 million ether at the time was worth uh, 50 million dollars. Um, this put a massive dent in the Ethereum ecosystem. You know, the, the confidence of people. The, you know, many people were attracted to Ethereum initially and just blockchain in general because of its ability to be immutable. And um, many, again, it's a very contentious topic as we discussed. Many people think code is law, um, uh, which is again very debatable. Um, uh, and and you know this this. This kind of um, this thing that happened in the ecosystem, you know, dented a lot of trust. And so, um, although it was a great experiment to start off with, it kind of uh, backfired. But um, the great news is that we've learned from our mistakes. The Ethereum ecosystem has come a long, 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 long way from uh, where it was in 2016. So um, there are new experiments. And like this fine gentleman has asked, uh, there is a very interesting project called uh, DXDAO. So for those of you who don't know, uh, DXDAO is a project that was launched by Gnosis. Um, Gnosis is um, a company based out in Berlin um, building prediction markets. And uh, another thing that they built to kind of help with their prediction market product is um, uh, something called DutchX. And uh, um, raise your hand if you ever heard the term uh, decentralized exchange. Oh wow, almost everyone. Perfect. So I don't need to explain it. Great. <laughs> so, they, so they built a decentralized exchange and uh, they realized as they were building this exchange, um, if they want it to be truly trustless and decentralized, which is you know, the ultimate objective of building a decentralized exchange, um, you can't have a centralized company or foundation manage that uh, protocol. So they very cleverly came up with this idea of um, distributing ownership of this exchange, uh, which is kind of fundamental infrastructure for uh, what's known as uh, DeFi. Has anyone heard of DeFi? Raise your hand. Uh, no? Okay, so raise your hand if you haven't heard of DeFi. Cool, a few hands. So De DeFi stands for Decentralized Finance. 
which is a major focus within uh, the Ethereum ecosystem. And it just essentially means you know, all of the systems that you expect from centralized providers, uh, we're thinking about how we can uh, 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 rethink them in a, in, in a decentralized fashion. And we have a few people in the crowd from Token, uh, Token Card, which are doing amazing work in DeFi space. So uh, if you want to go talk, uh, talk to them about DeFi, they'll, they'll, uh, they'll clue you up. So uh, they built this, um, uh, this DeFi project, um, uh, 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 sorry, they built this um, uh, DutchX, which is a decentralized exchange, and they realized, you know, um, you can't have a, uh, a decentralized exchange without decentralized governance over that exchange. So they built Dutch, um, they built DXDAO, which is essentially a DAO. Um, it has uh, way, way more secure contracts. The contracts have been audited uh, many, many times, and so hopefully, fingers crossed, no promises, but we shouldn't have any hacks like we did with the DAO. Um, but essentially, it, it is a very interesting project where um, they're allowing they're allowing everyone in this room right now, if you wanted to, to um, own a piece of uh, the Dutch X and contribute and kind of vote on the on the direction of that of that project. So. Um, uh, if no więc czym są zdecentralizowane autonomiczne organizacje? W skrócie można powiedzieć, że no są to organizacje bez jako takich jednostek zarządzających, bez struktur hierarchii. Organizacje, które są zarządzane za pomocą smart kontraktów, czyli wprogramowane są jakieś zasady, według których one działają. Jednostki, osoby mogą w nich uczestniczyć na zasadzie dobrowolności, czyli każdy, kto chce, może się włączyć, znaleźć sobie rolę dla siebie, która w jakiś tam sposób może być powiedzmy wynagradzana przy pomocy to te organizacje również mają jakiś tam swój model zarządzania, on może być on-chain bądź off-chain, czyli w zależności od tego, ile mamy tokenów, możemy mieć jakieś tam prawo głosu, wówczas mówią o zarządzaniu on-chain, bądź też off-chain, czyli wszelkiego rodzaju, powiedzmy, change requesty i, i e, propozycje zmian dyskutowane bardziej offline'owo i potem wdrażane w zależności od tego, jak społeczność się na ich temat zapatruje. No więc, czy zdecentralizowane organizacje mają sens bytu? Myślę, że czas to pokaże. DAO w ujęciu blockchainowym, w tej chwili to jest trochę taki proof of concept, nie ma myślę, że jeszcze dużo, w zasadzie nie ma wcale takich jakichś na dużą skalę tego rodzaju konceptów zaimplementowanych, natomiast fajnie, że blockchain w tą stronę eksperymentuje, myślę, że będą się rodzić ciekawe tematy. To, co miałem dzisiaj okazję tutaj obserwować, to była właśnie jedna z takich projektów na Ethereum DXDAO, czyli w skrócie zdecentralizowana organizacja dla zdecentralizowanej giełdy, czyli możemy wejść w skład powiedzmy zespołu zajmującego się rozwijaniem zdecentralizowanej giełdy, zdecydować o tym, to już moje do, takie domysły co do tego, co możemy robić w ramach takiej zdecentralizowanej organizacji, ale na przykład decydować o tym, jakie są fees dla użytkowników, jakie wpuszczamy tokeny, jaki ogólnie jest model działania takiej zdecentralizowanej giełdy, w jakich rynkach i tak dalej, i tak dalej. Więc no, taki projekt się dzisiaj tutaj właśnie w ramach konsensusu zrodził, przedstawiał. Całkiem ciekawy koncept, czy się przyjmie, to nie wiem. Natomiast widać, że są próby eksperymentowania, jak wykorzystać zdecentralizowane, autonomiczne organizacje w biznesie. Obserwujmy, co się z tym dzieje, na pewno jest to ciekawy trend.